Tessa Blanchard defends the Impact Wrestling World Championship against Taya Valkyrie in the first ever World Championship match featuring two women. Sue Young is a free agent. Has Kylie Ray signed with Impact Wrestling? Where is Matt Hardy going? We find out what the Impact Wrestling trolls are up to this week. All this and more coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. So Tessa Blanchard this week on Impact Wrestling defended her title against Taya Valkyrie in which which was the first time ever two women were in the ring battling for a world championship in professional wrestling. First time ever. Impact Wrestling made history. Great moment for professional wrestling. A big step forward for professional wrestling. But so many people hated it. So many people absolutely hated it. For some reason, they feel that having a woman as a world champion is not right. Some people feel that a world championship match in professional wrestling in which there are two women involved is not right. And I think this is absolutely ridiculous absolutely ridiculous nothing wrong with it at all nothing wrong with tessa blanchard making history as the impact wrestling world's heavyweight champion nothing wrong with it at all some people are saying why is she the man's champion why does it have to be the man's champion we're we're in 2020 right now okay we're in 2020 right now women are athletes just like men are athletes and there's nothing wrong there's nothing wrong with that i don't know why people are getting upset over tessa blanchard being the world champion and this match was fantastic this match between tessa blanchard and ty valkyrie was fantastic i absolutely loved this match great back and forth action they both proved that they belong there great match great match and if you want to if you want to think about world title matches let's go let's go by what is it, about a week ago uh, the super showdown whatever they want to call it at the wwe they had two title matches they had two title matches it was brock lesnar against ricochet and they had goldberg versus the fiend uh, they had two world title matches there and the the combination of time that these um these these two matches lasted for they didn't last for more than four minutes and 30 seconds two world championship title matches were a combined four minutes and 30 seconds long ricochet who is supposed to be the next uh, big thing supposed to be the next big star very very talented was absolutely squashed by Brock Lesnar in a minute and 30 seconds. I didn't see the match. Didn't care to see it. I don't watch WWE, but I heard that Brock Lesnar was a total squash. Ricochet didn't get in any, any offense at all. And then you have Goldberg, you know, against the Fiends. The Fiends, they are apparently building the Fiend up as his unstoppable force in the WWE. He took like I, I, I like 8,000 curb stomps from Seth Rollins, apparently. And uh, he could have be defeated and he was defeating everybody and 53 year old goldberg comes in hits him with a, a spear or two uh, i think it might have even been three or four spears and uh hits a uh, a uh, jackhammer apparently and uh, from what i read it looked really really sloppy and and he defeats the fiend he, he he defeats this unstoppable force in three minutes so four minutes 30 seconds for two world title matches tessa blanchard versus Taya valkyrie as I said, fantastic match. 15 minutes and 15 seconds. So wh what are you going to complain about? What are you going to complain about? Are you going to complain that you have two women in the ring, you know, giving it their all for 15 minutes in a world title match? Or are you going to complain about Brock Lesnar uh, squashing Ricochet in, in a minute 30 and, and Goldberg beating the unstoppable force, The Fiend, 
in in three minutes. You know, what are you going to complain about? I know what I would complain about. I know what I'm complaining about, and it's not Tessa Blanchard against Ty Valkyrie. Go back. Let's go back to Tessa Blanchard. People are. Let's go back to her. I'm, I'm getting like a little feisty, man. <laughs> I'm getting a little worked up again, man. But Tessa Blanchard, you know, when she first won the title, everyone's like, "Oh, how could they put the title on a woman? How could they put the title on a woman?" Tessa Blanchard deserves that opportunity to be the leader of a professional wrestling organization. She has worked her ass off to get there, and she deserves it. It's not like they put the title on, say, Alicia Edwards, uh, Madison Rain, uh, or Kiara Hogan. They didn't say, well, we're going to make history by putting the title on a woman. Let's, let's just pick any woman and put the title on her. They put the title on the best woman wrestler in the world, Tessa Blanchard. Nobody could have pulled that off. Nobody else could have pulled that off as well as Tessa Blanchard. You can say Taya Valkyrie, but I don't think Taya Valkyrie could could uh, could have pulled it off. Tessa Blanchard pulled it off, and she was capable of pulling it off, and she proved that she could pull it off being the world's heavyweight champion of Impact Wrestling. Absolutely, absolutely a tremendous talent in Tessa Blanchard, and she's proved that she's worthy of being the Impact Wrestling World Champion. And BQ, if I repeated myself once or twice, I apologize. But I just want to get that point across. <laughs> BQ, he, uh, he, he says I repeat myself a lot. So I've been trying to curb that. I've been trying to... I've been trying to uh, not repeat myself uh, too often during these podcasts, but uh, I just want to get that point across um, on how incredibly talent Tessa Bl- talented Tessa Blanchard is. So again... If, uh, you know, a lot of these trolls probably didn't even watch the match. They probably didn't even watch the match. They just see two women in the ring and they're they're going on social media and they're complaining about it. Uh, I bet you they didn't even watch the match, uh, the majority of them. But if they did watch the match, then they would understand. Absolutely fantastic. Fantastic. So, Sue Young. Sue Young has announced that she is a free agent. And this, this has me a little concerned because Sue Young just made her return to to Impact Wrestling uh, last week. And uh, I love her entrance. One of my favorite, favorite entrances in all of professional wrestling. I To see it on TV is one thing, but, but, but to be there live, to see that entrance is just, just fantastic. And I really hope that they signed Sue Young. I don't see her going anywhere else. I don't see her leaving Impact Wrestling. I see her signing another deal with Impact Wrestling. You know, you could th- she's not going to go to NXT because if she goes to NXT, they're not going to take the Sue Young character. Uh, I don't know. I don't. Know, they, they'll change her character. She'll. She, she worked so hard to build up that Sue Young character, and I, again, I don't, I don't see Triple H or Vince McMahon saying, "Oh yeah, let's let's bring in the Sue Young character." I don't. That was my Vince McMahon impersonation. I, I'm sorry, it was horrible, but I don't, I, I don't see them doing that. And as I said, as I said, she's worked so hard to build up that character. I don't think she's gonna, she would want, would want to walk away from it. AEW, I don't know, I don't know, I. I I don't see her going. I see her staying with Impact Wrestling. I'm predicting it right now. She's going to sign another contract with Impact Wrestling. I wouldn't be surprised in a few days if we see the announcement that Stu Young has signed a a three year deal with Impact Wrestling. And I got my fingers crossed because I'm a big fan of Stu Young. Big fan of Sue Young, so hopefully uh, she'll be returning to Impact Wrestling. And Kylie Ray, I was reading reports uh, about uh, ten minutes ago that you know Kylie Ray uh, question mark is that she's back with Impact Wrestling. I couldn't confirm that she's actually signed a contract with them, and um, don't like giving spoilers. But she was apparently at the uh, at the Atlanta tapings uh, for a few matches, uh, so. I would love to see an announcement be made that Kylie Ray has signed with Impact Wrestling because she's be a, she would be an incredible addition uh, to the Knockouts division. Uh, very very talented Kylie Ray. I know she was in AEW. She left. Not exactly sure why she left. There rumors were were running rampant on why she left uh, AEW. But I would love to see her in Impact Wrestling. A uh, lot of talent there. A lot of potential for her in, in Impact Wrestling. Uh, her against uh, Ty Valkyrie would be a great match. Her going after um, Jordan Grace uh, for the Knockouts title would be would be something um, something I'd be very, very interested in seeing. So hopefully, hopefully uh, in the next few days, it will 
See, Sue Young has re-upped, and we'll see. Kylie Ray has signed a uh, contract with with Impact Wrestling, so that's that's what I'm that's what I'm hoping for. Um, Destiny Wrestling, there's a Destiny Wrestling, which is uh, I believe they're a partner promotion of Impact Wrestling. Uh, I know uh, Scott Demore shows up there a lot. Um, they have a match coming up. They have a match coming up uh, at uh, one of their shows. Uh, I believe it's uh, this month, and it's going to be uh, the Destiny World Heavyweight Champion is 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 uh, Josh Alexander, who's one half of the Impact Wrestling Tag Team Champions. He's the Destiny uh, World's Heavyweight Champion, and he's going to be defending his title on the show against NXT Cruiserweight Champion Jordan Devlin. Now, that's going to be very interesting because it, basically it's going to be Impact Wrestling versus the WWE. They haven't marketed like that. I wish they were able to, but they haven't. Um, they're not promoting it. Impact versus WWE, but you know the fans aren't stupid. The fans know this is Impact versus WWE, and it's it's going to be a good show. And I I wish I could go, but unfortunately it's on a Sunday, and I have to work on Monday early, and I live four hours away, so unfortunately I can't go. But I I see this is going to be a great match. You know Josh Alexander. Um, I don't need to tell anybody just how great Josh, Josh Alexander is. Uh, it's going to be a great match. I, I, Jordan Devlin is not going to defeat Josh Alexander for the Destiny World Championship. So Impact Wrestling is going to get one over on, on WWE um, during this show. And uh, I, I hope they tape it. I hope I'm able to see it because this is going to be a great one. So there you have it. It's uh, Impact Wrestling versus WWE. Right here uh, in Ontario for Destiny Wrestling, for Destiny Wrestling. So, uh, yeah. So if you're if you're in the Toronto area and you go out and watch uh, Josh Alexander versus Jordan Devlin at, at uh, Destiny Wrestling at the Don Cola Arena. Matt Hardy, Matt Hardy. Let's talk about Matt Hardy for a little bit because Matt Harley, Matt Harley, Matt Hardy. He's now a free agent. Uh, he's in negotiations with Impact Wrestling, amongst other promotions. I think he mentioned AEW and NWA. Um, I think I think he said Ring of Honor as well. I'm not sure. Uh, so he's in negotiations with quite a few promotions. I have my fingers crossed. I would love to see Matt Hardy back in Impact Wrestling. It's where. He began the broken character. Uh, it's where he had his most success as the broken character. He tried it in the WWE. Didn't quite work out. Uh, Matt Hardy said that Vince McMahon didn't understand the broken character. Not surprisingly, you know, there's a guy who wants to go back uh, to the past and, and put the belt on uh, 53 year old uh, Bill Goldberg. Uh, so, yeah, he didn't understand the character. And for that matter, going back to Sue Young, he won't understand the Sue Young character either. So, so there you go. I'll, I'll, I'll put that, I'll put that out there as well. Uh, but Matt Hardy would love to see him back. We'll love to see him back. Let's get the broken universe going again in Impact Wrestling. I got my fingers crossed for that. Now, speaking of, of, wrestlers not happy in the WWE that are trying to get out of that contract just want to touch touch upon the revival for a second the revival great tag team uh, in the WWE not happy not happy at all here's a what if situation what if they got out of their contracts and you know the rumor is that they're going to AEW you know that's the rumor but you know rumors are rumors but what if scenario what if they got out of the contract and they decided that you know we want to just and wrestle for every promotion and take on the best tag teams in those promotions before we decide on signing a contract with anybody with any promotion uh, on a full-time basis what if they came to impact wrestling just think about the matches that the north josh alexander and ethan Payne would have with scott dawson and dash wilder the revival that would that that would be a great great series of matches Again, what if scenario? I mean, it could happen. I mean, you look at Cody Rhodes. When Cody Rhodes left, left the WWE, he wrestled all over. You know, he wrestled Ring of Honor. He wrestled New Japan. He wrestled Impact. He wrestled all over. He wanted to wrestle the best in each promotion. What if the Revival went that route? And who knows? What if What if they enjoyed working for Impact Wrestling and they decided that it's a great place to be and they... they Wanted to sign with Impact Wrestling. And this, anything could happen. Anything could happen. Now, of course, you know, like I said earlier, the rumor is AEW, but you never know. You never know. You never know what people are thinking. You never know what people are thinking. Uh, would love, uh, we'll love to see that. We'll love to see that scenario unfold. And, um, 
love to see the revival. I mean, even, even if it's like a three, four month contract, you know, just to get a series of matches against the North. I mean, think about it. I think I think any anybody that's a professional wrestling fan would absolutely absolutely enjoy seeing that. Would absolutely enjoy seeing that. Uh, so let's move on. TNA, TNA, the throwback show. The throwback show. Let's talk about that for a little bit. And this is this is going to be an unpopular opinion, and I apologize, uh, but it is my opinion, and I know a lot of people don't share the opinion with me. I personally am not looking forward to the TNA throwback reunion show. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm I'm not looking forward to it. I'm not looking forward to it. I think instead of looking, to, like I said, like I said in 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 prior shows on prior shows they should be looking to the future not not to the past especially if they can't bring back the guys that made tna tna let's let's run down some of the talent that they're going to have on uh, the tna throwback show so you're going to have amazing red uh you got pd williams pd williams on the impact roster so pd williams is going to be on the show uh disco inferno is announced um who else we got we got shark boy is has been announced a few times uh johnny swinger i believe uh is johnny swinger i'm not sure i'm not sure if johnny swinger is announced for that show but uh, who else we got here um I believe uh, Kenny uh, Kenny Anderson Ken Anderson uh, Kenny Anderson I think he played for the for the New Jersey Nets Ken Anderson uh, and um, there's another another guy that they're bringing in from uh, that was with Aces and Eights uh, but anyway there there were no names that th- that they're announcing D- Dave Penzer they announced no names that they're announcing that that make me as a professional wrestling fan or would make any casual professional wrestling fan want to buy this um, pay per view. Uh, and tune in on Fight TV. It just, I, it just, I'm just not into it. I'm just not into it. Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Again, I know it's an unpopular opinion with uh, with Impact Wrestling fans, but if you don't have like AJ Styles or or, um, or Samoa Joe or or Jeff Jarrett or Christopher Daniels, um, you can't uh, you can't really have a uh, throwback show. I know uh, Chris Sabin. Chris Sabin uh, is going to be. Oh yeah, Chris Harris. Is going to be there as well, uh, Mr. Anderson uh, and D'Lo Brown. You know the aces there. That Mr. Anderson and D'Lo Brown will be there representing aces and eights. They can't, I don't even think they could bring in Bully Ray because Bully Ray is signed with uh, with the Ring of Honor Wrestling. So this really it just doesn't appeal to me at all. Doesn't appeal to me at all. Okay, let's let's move on. Let's move on then. Um, lockdown's coming up. Lockdown is coming up. Uh, here in Windsor, I will be attending Lockdown. Uh, it's coming up here um, two weeks, two weeks, twenty days. We're twenty days away from from Lockdown here in Windsor, Ontario. And I just, I'm looking forward to the show. They haven't announced any matches yet for the show, but I'm sure they'll announce the matches as the weeks are are going on. There's two weeks to go, as I said. Uh, one thing I would love to see happen. One thing that I would love to see happen. In Windsor, Ontario, March 28th, 2020, in his hometown, Aiden, uh, talking about Aiden Prince, I would love to see Scott Damore enter the ring, enter the cage, because every match is a cage match, enter that cage, grab that microphone, praise Aiden Prince, and give him a three-year deal right there in the ring. I would love that. The fans would go absolutely nuts. Aiden Prince from Windsor, Ontario, as I said, has a huge following here. Would love to see that happen. the The place would freaking go nuts. The they would blow the roof off the place if Scott Demore stepped in the ring and offered Aiden Prince a three year deal. So Scott Demore, I am begging you to please offer Aiden Prince that three year deal because I know he was on Twitter and he expressed interest in. All Elite Wrestling in AEW is trying to get Cody Rhodes' attention on Twitter. Don't let that happen. Don't let Aiden Prince get away. This guy is absolutely phenomenal. If you haven't heard um, uh, the interview I did with Josh Alexander, it's available now on the Impact Lounge. Josh Alexander himself said that if he was Scott Demore, he would give a contract to Aiden Prince. So don't let Aiden Prince get away. Don't let Aiden Prince get away, please. Scott Demore, 
give him that three-year deal right here in Windsor, Ontario, March 28th. Please, please, Scott Demore. And I, I put it up on social media a number of times, and it got a lot of uh, a lot of retweets and a lot of likes. So a lot of people are um, agreeing uh, with my thoughts. The the feeling is the my thoughts are mutual with, with a lot of uh, Impact Wrestling fans. So hopefully that'll happen. Hopefully that'll happen. I would love to see that happen. Uh, and I mentioned the Josh Alexander interview. Uh, if I did an interview recently with Josh Alexander, and it's available right now on the Impact Lounge, so check it out if you haven't checked it out already. It was a great interview. We talked about a number of topics. Uh, interview with one half of the world's tag team champions. The Impact Wrestling World Tag Team Champion. Josh Alexander. Check it out. Interview is on there. It was a great guy. Great interview. Uh, so let's move on. Um... What else we got going on here today? Oh, yeah. I was watching Explosion. I was watching Explosion. Uh, There's a show back in uh, uh, January that had... um, They were... They had... um Battle Pro, I believe. Battle Pro um, wrestlers were, were wrestling. It was a tag team match. And one of the guys on the... Uh, it was actually Matt McIntosh and Buster Jackson uh, versus uh, Nikos Rikos and Gigolo Justin. Uh, it was a good match. It was a very good match. But there was one standout. One standout in that match that I would love to see Impact Wrestling give an opportunity to. And his name is Matt McIntosh. He was absolutely fantastic in that match. The other wrestlers were, were good, but Matt McIntosh was the obvious standout, as I said, in that match. Very, very talented. I was very, very impressed. It made, after watching that, I, I want to see more of Matt McIntosh. Uh, so um, I'll be checking YouTube out, looking for some of his matches. But talked about Scott Demore signing uh, Aiden Prince. Scott Demore, one more time, man. You, you should take a, second, <laughs> take a second look at Matt McIntosh. Very, very, very talented. And um, the fans, uh, the fans were, were into him. The fans were into him. Um, we'll love to see him get a shot at Impact Wrestling. I think he would definitely add a lot uh, to the Impact Wrestling roster. Um, so there, so Scott Demore, if he's listening, and that'd be great if Scott Demore was listening. If if he's listening, Aiden Prince, Matt McIntosh, great additions, uh, pot- great potential additions to the Impact Wrestling roster. All right, I think uh, I think it's time. I think it's time to uh, check out and take a look at uh, my uh, my favorite <laughs> Impact Wrestling troll comments of the week. I wish I had a drum to do a drum roll, but I don't. So let's go right into it and see what my favorite Impact Wrestling troll comments are for this week. Okay, there was there was a um, it was one of those ICU um, uh, videos that Impact Wrestling put up, and somebody wrote that they think that it's Matt Hardy. That's fine. They, they, they think that it's Matt Hardy, but then some other person chimes in and says yeah, it's, it, it can't be uh, Matt Hardy because Impact Wrestling is taped months in advance. So there are people out there that still think that Impact Wrestling is taped like two, three, four months in advance. So I, I called her out on it and uh, I said, you know, don't comment uh, if you don't know what you're talking about because it's not taped months in advance. And she's like, it's literally taped months in advance. So we went back and forth a few times and I told her, I, I asked her to prove it. Prove that it's taped months in advance. I, I want your proof. So she she uploaded a, she she uploaded a video to the comments, uh, and it says TNA taping show months in advance with a question mark on it. So I clicked on it. First of all, the video is from some guy wearing uh, sunglasses. I I don't know who this person is. I've never seen this person before. He's just he's just a uh, some dude. Some dude with a mustache wearing uh, fancy sunglasses, and he's talking uh, about TNA taping shows two, three months in advance. Um, but when I looked at the date when this was uploaded to YouTube, it was uploaded September 20th, 2014. So she's going on a video from some guy that I don't recognize, I don't think anybody would recognize, that's been uploaded in 2014 that has 104 views by the way so nobody's really watching this this nobody really watched this video except i guess she was one of the 104 so she's going by on a video from 2014 and she's saying that it's literally 
taped months in advance because of this video. And I'm saying the date again, 2014, from 2014. See, this is the mentality these people have. This is the mentality. This is the ignorant, stupid mentality that these people have. They, they still. She's and we went on for a bit more, and she's, she's like, yes, they do. They've been, they've been. She used the word literally a lot. You know, they're literally taping the past six years. There's been no change to their taping schedule. They, this is a, this is an expert on on the Impact Wrestling taping schedule. This is an expert. The last six years, they haven't changed anything, uh, any any changes to the taping schedule. Okay. Let's go back. When Dixie Carter was running the show, when she was in charge, yes, Impact Wrestling, they did tape months in advance. They were at the Impact Zone in Florida, and they would be there for a week or so, and they would tape all their shows there. And then, back then, the the shows were taped months in advance. That's when it was done. But when Scott Demore, Don Callis took over, that stopped. They tape weeks in advance, okay? They tape weeks in advance. They're at, sometimes it's one week in advance, you know, one, two, three weeks in advance. It's not months in advance anymore. And they're not doing anything different than Ring of Honor, Major League Wrestling, and the way of any promotion that doesn't have a live show, they're not doing anything different. And I've made this point so many times, but people don't just want to listen and it's so stupid and it don't cares if they're taping weeks in advance they're doing the same thing any other promotion that doesn't have a live show nxt does the same thing it does the same thing i don't see why this is an issue when it comes to impact wrestling it's just so moronic people need to shut the hell up about it it's so stupid you know, and, and it's just it, and to bring something up, bring up a video from some schmuck from 2014 who has a hundred and four views, and says, "Listen, listen to what this guy said six years ago." It's just stupid. It's just stupid. It's just dumb. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. Let's let's move on to the next one. I just I gotta pull it up here. Okay, there uh, against all odds. Against all odds is coming up. It's gonna be on Impact Plus, April seventeenth. It's going to be at the Don Kolov Arena here in uh, Mississauga, Ontario. Now the Don Kolov Arena holds about three four hundred people. It's 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 a decent decent sized um, venue. Uh, but right off the bat, somebody has to uh, somebody has to. Um, comment oh it's in a tiny arena so what it's in a it's a house show that's going to be on impact plus it's on a house show that's going to be on impact plus it's in in front of three to four hundred people destiny wrestling has his, has their shows there all the time i've been to that arena the people that go to that show are very vocal they're very loud Nothing wrong with uh, having a house show at the Don Kolov Arena, and and when Don Callis is there, they 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 call it the Don Callis Arena, which is pretty, which is pretty cool. I've I've been there, and they start singing in unison. All the fans are singing the Don Callis Arena, and it's it's pretty cool. So it's a good place. I know why they're going back there because of the vocal fans, and it's a great venue. Don't worry about the tiny arena. Who cares if it's a tiny arena? Think about the matches that are going to be taking place in the ring. And they're going to be fantastic. So just need to stop the tiny arena bull crap. You know, then another person on the same on the same post, he's complaining. He's saying you need to make these shows pay-per-view. You need to make these pay-per-view instead of just shows. Dude, dude, this is going to be on Impact Plus. Okay, this is going to be on Impact Plus. And it's going to cost you $7.99 to watch it. So it's on Impact Plus. Do you, do you not want to sign up to Impact Plus? Would you rather pay $30, $40 for a pay-per-view? Sign up for Impact Plus. You're going to get the show. I mean, why, is, why, why do we have to why, why do you have to go on pay-per-view? Just sign up for Impact Plus. That's all you need to do. It's, it's just a dumb, it's a dumb, uh, a dumb comment. It's a really dumb comment. And, uh, and somebody after that uh, says, yeah, I agree because no one can afford Impact Plus. So if he can't afford Impact Plus, how?
how are you going to afford a pay per view? Unless this guy was just being sarcastic, uh, but I, I don't, I don't know. Usually, you, if someone's going to be sarcastic, you'll get the the emoji with somebody rolling their eyes at the end of it. I don't know if this guy's being sarcastic or not, but he's like, yeah, I agree. No one can afford it back plus. So instead of affording seven ninety nine a month, you know, we'll, um, which you can cancel. Whenever you want to cancel, so if you want to if you want to watch Against All Odds, uh, and no, I don't, uh, I'm not, I'm not suggesting people do that, no, of course. But I mean, if you want to watch if you want to watch Against All Odds, sign up for Impact Plus. You know, sign up for Impact Plus. You you get Against All Odds. You get all the all the Impact Plus specials. You get uh, Alpha One Wrestling. You'll you'll get a lot of indie wrestling. You get you get all as much impact wrestling com- content as you can get for 7.99 a month and but no they want it on pay-per-view they want to <laughs> they want the show on pay-per-view so they can spend 30 40 dollars for the for the for the one pay-per-view it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense it's stupid i don't understand these people i don't understand them at all i'm sorry i don't know i don't understand them at all it, it doesn't make sense but anyway okay i um I think that's all I got for this for this uh, for this week. Let me look over my notes. Yeah, no, yep, yeah, that's it. That's it for this week. So that on that note, I'm gonna say thank you very much for listening again. And don't forget, I got uh, the Josh Alexander interview is now available on the Impact Lounge. Check it out. Uh, Larry D is coming up as well uh, in a few weeks, and um, looking to get a few more Impact Wrestling uh, interviews as well. So until next time. Thank you very much, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.